Hey, Shalom, Grand Rising, Osio Halito. Welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. I am your brother, Daniela, AKA the Capital Aboriginal. And before I get started, I wanna give all praises to the Most High. I also wanna give recognition to Yahweh Shai and the Holy Spirit. I wanna give many salutes, much love, much a hop to you brothers and sisters who are keeping the will of our God to the best of your abilities. So with that being said, welcome to the video. Um, as I said, I was gonna make a part two to the heathen raging, right? Um, so yeah, you know, welcome to the video. Uh, you know, I implore you brothers and sisters to send up righteous prayers, not only for yourselves, but for your friends, your family members, the innocent and Israel, that the most high provide for us, protect us, heal us and restore us. And with that being said, welcome to the video. Um, I'm a little excited because today is my Friday and I finally get, to get around to making this video. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So anyways, welcome to the video. There are things I want to go over. Um, there are things I want to talk about when it comes to this eclipse. Also, some new things I wanted to add before I get into uh, what I wanted to show in the apocalypse of Baruch. So anyways, check out the brother in Yarika. Uh, check out his channel. Let me scroll down. This is his channel right here. Check this brother out. Not only does he uh, make good content, uh, good music, but he's a cool guy, man. He he really is. Um, he's a very down to earth brother. Um, he does homesteading. He built his own tiny home with his own hands. Um, he does homesteading. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a little congested right now. He does homesteading. So he. Um, farms i think he's planning on getting some animals soon uh and yeah you know that brother he's doing his thing um it's it's a beautiful thing you know we're trying to do our little thing we don't have land in the middle of of the forest or anything like that which i did but with the land that we do have we're doing our thing too so it's beautiful seeing our people return back to to nature you know getting out into nature you know, raising our own food because we're gonna have to, man. These devils, they're trying to do whatever they can to destroy us and not just destroy Israel, everyone. They want to kill everyone, okay? It's not just Israel. They wanna destroy everyone. Like scripture said, had the most high not shortened time, and yes, time is getting short. I'm gonna get on that in a second. Had he not shortened time, there will be no flesh left alive. And that has become very evident over the past several years. A lot of, there has been this huge awakening over the past several years, right? And, you know, I mentioned that in my other video, you know, especially with us so-called Hebrew Israelites, but there's a lot of people waking up because, you know, in Jeremiah 16, 19, I believe it's 16, 19, or it could be 19, 16, where it says that in the last days, the heathens, will re essentially i'm paraphrasing they're going to realize that they have inherited lies we are definitely in that age right let me pull up on my phone real quick because i want to read it to you guys <clears throat> to show you that we're in that time so sorry let me open up my app yeah we're definitely <laughs> why did i just type in app um let me pull this up. Okay, it, it may very well be. Okay, let me 
pull it up. Okay. Okay. Hmm. My app is being weird. I, I don't know why. I'm typing in Jeremiah 16, 19. It's not pulling anything up. And even when I type in Jeremiah 16, nothing is popping up. Okay, let me just, just scroll to Jeremiah. Okay. Let me go to the 16th chapter. Uh, I don't know why, for some reason, when I, when I typed in Jeremiah, for some reason, it wasn't popping up. <clears throat> so anyways, it says in Jeremiah 16, 19, um, O Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentile shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity and things wherein there is no profit. So there's going to be a day where these Gentiles are going to realize that they've been lied to about everything and that everything that they have gained from the lies ain't going to be worth shit. It isn't worth nothing in the end, because everything that they've been taught was built on these lies that got them nowhere. So their children today are starting to wake up. This is why you have these flat earthers. This is why you have these truther groups in societies, because they're realizing that what they've been taught this entire time are a bunch of lies. This is why you see a lot of white people waking up to this stuff and they get into these conspiracy theories and all this stuff, right? Because they're waking up and they're realizing you have a lot of so-called non-Negro people who are waking up to the truth. And a lot of them are afraid of the truth. A lot of them are accepting the truth. You know, the truth is, is that we are the indigenous peoples of the Americas. We've always been here. And that the real biblical nations like Israel, Egypt, Babylon, Assyria, and Lebanon, and what have you, that they were actually located here in the Americas. You have a lot of Gentiles, whether they're black, white, Asian, uh, Hispanic, what have you, Middle Eastern, they're like, yeah, we know. <laughs> we, you know, yeah, okay, well, I didn't know this, but now I do, and it's true. Here's the proof, right? Just like with the Putin situation, Putin revealed black Christ. And you know what? Speaking of which, you have these fact checkers, right? Who are going around saying that that's not what Putin said. But then there are people who speak Russian and say that's what Putin said. So I don't speak Russian, so I can't say that's what he said. But you have people who speak Russian who said, oh, yeah, Ru Putin said that Russian, uh, that Christ is black. And then you have fact checkers online who are saying, you know, he didn't say that Christ is black, but it doesn't even matter, right? Because the fact of the matter is, is that Christ, when he was on earth, he was what you would call a black man, right? He was a melanated Negro man, just like myself, okay? That's the truth. It doesn't matter what everybody else is saying. It doesn't, because we know these fact checkers are full of shit. They're full of it. They were telling people that, oh, it's not true that the vaccine is dangerous and this and that. Remember, they were banning posts. They, they got rid of several of my posts saying I was spreading misinformation, fact checking it. That's not true that the vaccines are completely safe and so on and so forth. And then here we are a year or two later after people got that damn snake venom in their blood. People start killing over. And then they then they admit that, hey, it's true. This stuff was dangerous. It is killing people, you know, so stop buying into that crap. We need to stop buying into that bullshit of the fact checkers because they're full of it. But the fact of the matter is, is that when Christ was in a body, he was in a melanated Negroid body like myself, such as myself. Right. So it doesn't matter what they say. They can say whatever they want. I'm sorry. I think. to plug my internet back up because I knocked out the cord. But, um, you know, these people are realizing that they're inheriting lies. And shout out to the sister Deboria. Um, she recently did a video where she was showing like a compilation of Gentiles, right? Reacting 
to what Putin revealed, right? And you had some heathens that were sitting there just upset and angry that Putin would bring it out. And they're like questioning why would he bring it out? Is this some type of military strategy? So on? who cares? Who cares? The thing is, is that all you evil devils out there who don't accept it, who are still being hateful towards the most high people, you're being marked. That's just what it is. But then you have those who are waking up and who are accepting truth and they're coming at. I mean, you can. There's this channel called My Lunch Break. Check that channel out. It's a good channel. You have all these Tartaria channels out there that, you know, they're filled with so-called Gentiles where these people are waking up to the truth and they're realizing that they're, they have inherited lies and that it profited them nothing, nothing, right? They're upset and angry about their, the truth being hidden. My history being hidden. They're upset about that. You know, you have a lot of so-called white folks out there who know that who have learned or knew for a long time that so-called Americans are the indigenous people here right they've seen the books they've seen the paintings they they read the literature they've seen the the murals you know in the in the mayan temples and they're like damn we've been lied to this entire time so they're waking up jeremiah 16 19 is coming to fruition we are in those last days we're in those last days, you know. Um, but like I said, check out the brother Yarka's channel. He has a great channel. Um, he, you know, I'm glad he shared that channel because he has me looking at the eclipse from a different perspective. You know, I have been suspicious of the eclipse ever since I've heard about it, right? Um, and me personally, I look at it as a sign. Now, whether or not this eclipse is fake or real, I will never know, right? But I'm going to lean towards it being real because I feel like they are using this eclipse because we know that according to scripture, everything in the sky is supposed to be used for signs, right? So your stars, your moon, and sun used for signs and seasons. So that's how I'm looking at this eclipse. But we also know that these pagans, these witches, they use those days for rituals because there's a lot of energy on those days, right? You know, like when your eclipses, when there's meteor showers, stuff like that, there's a lot of energy and they take advantage of those days. And that's why they keep track of all those days, right? So that they can do their rituals. Well, come to find out on the 8th, CERN, or they're called Earth now, they're also running the, the Hydron Collider on that day, right? And then also, uh, people have gotten sources. You know, they have sources that are saying that on that day, you know, the military is going to be spreading, you know, chemicals in the air, and it could be a biological attack that's going to happen. I warned about that a few, probably like a week ago, but I wasn't too sure on how they were doing it. Crazy thing is, is that literally last week, last week. I saw planes taking off from an Air Force Base here in Central Ohio called Rickenbacker Air Force Base. I I, I, I literally don't work too far from there, right? <clears throat> Last week I saw about, I personally saw about like probably 10, 15 planes taking off, but there was more than that that were already up in the sky. I saw about 10, 15 of those planes take off. Check out this video because the brother in Yarka is going to show another brother who's going to show the planes that, are, that were taken off and are suspectingly or we suspect are going to be spraying the skies with chemicals right on the day of the eclipse on the 8th right um those very same planes i saw those planes take off now they came out of youngstown ohio allegedly um but they also took off here from the columbus ohio area now maybe they were originally from the youngstown area i'm not sure but I definitely saw those planes. I saw them flying off in the sky. Little did I know what they were being used for, what they're going to be used for. So uh, like I said, check out Yarka's channel. I'm definitely looking at this eclipse differently. I'm definitely going to stay more vigilant. You know, what's going to happen? Uh, me and my wife and, and our friend, we're, we're going to go prepared no matter what, whether it's real or not, you know, real eclipse or a biological attack, if we're still going to see it. Because it's crazy. Remember, I showed—I well, don't know if I showed it in the TikTok video um, a few weeks back—that 
they predict they predicted like over a month ago that there was going to be record cloud coverage on the 8th and it's like how ironic is that on a day where there's going to be a solar eclipse you know millions of people are traveling all across the country to see this thing there's going to be cloud coverage y'all predicted that a month in advance and it's like i've never seen weather so precise before i mean they don't even like most radars don't show you what's going on a month in advance because things can change but literally when we first heard that news a few weeks ago and mind you it was predicted a month before that we looked at our forecast you know our two-week forecast and it literally showed that it was going to be sunny and clear that day tell me why two days ago my wife checked and it's going to be overcast the entire day now i'm hoping that it clears up before then but isn't it crazy how that happens you know they predicted that this was going to happen over a month ago and then it happens like what are the chances of that like i don't buy it at all i know that that they did that right they did that and i think that's perfect it's very perfect for what they're allegedly supposed to be doing if they're going to spray the sky with these planes they need cloud coverage see their way of getting people out there was oh there's this eclipse that's going to happen if it's really going to happen right let's get all these people to these centers let's let's get millions because literally you're going to have millions and millions of people who aren't even from these towns that are going to be in these cities and towns to see the eclipse what better way to conduct a biological attack than to do it when you got literally hundreds of millions of people i'm not gonna say hundreds of millions but you got several tens of millions of people gathered in these 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 cities across the country what better way to do it right so check out the brother yarka's video uh his live stream that he did last night it goes more in detail and stuff like that but definitely check it out because I'm, I'm very very suspicious i mean i've always been suspicious like i said but he's he's allowing me to see it from a different perspective with the information that he shared i implore you guys to watch his video um so anyways you know get back to these heathens you know jeremiah 16 19 you know they're realizing that they've been lied to and just like that that uh young lady that big judah shared in his video you seen her raging going crazy i mean Losing faith in everything, right? Calling herself a prophet. And it's like, come on, really? Really? You call yourself a prophet? I mean, these these Gentiles, they are raging. They are losing their mind. They are being dismayed. Um, even the, the lady that Inyarka showed in his video. See, this is the brother right here. This is the brother right here that is, he got uh, information from like a sheriff's department that they're going to conduct, that the military is going to conduct a biological attack on that day um and then also this this uh, homesteader named doug him and his wife also got information from other sources that there's going to be a uh, biological attack on that day right but let me see if i can find this uh this white woman anyways you you won't be able to see her or anything i'm not even gonna play her but you'll see her towards the end of the video well you'll hear her towards the end of the video and she is like going off man like she's like you know, this is gonna be a biological attack and this and that. She's pulling up all these different videos and, and you know websites showing you know that they're going to that something big may happen on the eighth. And see, this is the thing. We're not supposed to be afraid. We're supposed to be prepared. Be informed, definitely be informed. That's why I'm making this video to inform people who watch my videos. Be informed, educate yourself, but do not and, and prepare, but do not be afraid. That's the thing. You're not supposed to be afraid. Get ready for what could be our new reality. Be ready, right? You know, don't be afraid. There's no reason because if you have faith in the most high, you know, he he may preserve you. He may preserve you. But if it's in his will to take you, be OK with that. Be OK with that. You know, um, but anyways, going back to the Russian icons, you know, you have people, you know, tripping about it. And, and see, this is the thing. Whether Putin said that or not, it doesn't matter. Because when you look at the Russian icons, these paintings have been around 
for like I want to say close to like what is it 2024 so these things these things have been around for like 600 years 600 years and it's just so funny how they always depicted Christ as being a Caucasian whether he was a white skin Caucasian or a tan Caucasian they always depicted him as a Caucasian and as soon as Putin reveals that he was really a black man like we've been saying for the longest now it's like oh well it really it, it does it really matter oh skin color don't matter and all every time we bring up that Christ was a negro he looked like the person that they persecute the people that they persecute the people that they kick down in the ditches and and never wants to pay us back for anything that we deserve and now it's oh it don't matter it don't matter why should it matter i i see past color and all this stuff but when but if it don't matter so much why is it that y'all depict him as a white man in the movies if it didn't matter if it didn't matter why didn't y'all just depict him as a black guy why is it that it had to take a black man to make a movie depicting christ as a black man for us to get that depiction why is it that that had to happen for us to get that depiction if color didn't matter y'all should y'all should have been made a movie on your own depicting christ as a black man if it didn't matter right if race doesn't matter if it doesn't matter what what race christ was or what nation he descend from why didn't y'all make a movie of a black christ and black israelites back in the, in in the 1990s or 1980s or 10 years ago but now it doesn't matter because y'all have no comeback. See, like I said about that woman, she's no prophet because if she were a prophet, she would have been, she would have known that Christ is black. She would have known that Christ is black. You know what I'm saying? But she's sitting there crying about America and America has been evil to my people and Christ's people, right? evil have been nothing but evil to and you're crying about the fall of this evil country yet if Christ was here he'd be like F this country destroy this country but yet you're a prophet you're definitely not a prophet of the most high the God of Israel you're definitely not a prophet of that God because you ain't gonna be out here crying for evil wicked country you're just not that's the bottom line. You're just not going to cry about it, right? But anyways, you know, that movie, um, what was that movie called? The Book of Clarence. That was a good book. I mean, that was a good movie. You guys should definitely check that movie out. I'm mad that a lot of our people didn't support that movie. You have a lot of Hebrew Israelites saying that that movie was um, essentially saying that was blasphemy. You had Christians saying the same thing. You had white Christians saying that that was an Antichrist movie. And it's like, really, really, really? Really? Antichrist movie? Just because Christ was depicted as a black man in there? I mean, people were so butthurt about Christ. I mean, they're always so butthurt when anyone, any of the Israelites are depicted how they actually were, which were Negroes, right? So-called Negroes, right? Really, really pathetic. Um, But anyways, I wanted to go over here to... I'm sorry. No, actually, I want to pull this up. I want to because I copied it and put it on here so I can have bigger print because the little print, my vision isn't too great. So, but um, see, we should not be crying for this country called the United States. Yes, the lands here belong to us, right? A so-called Negroes. The land belongs to us because we are the so-called American Indians. We were the ones that the Europeans met when they came here. That's why they depict us, the American Indians, as us. This is why they describe them looking like us, because we are them. This is why so-called Negroes always have Indian in their family, because that's our ancestors, right? And before that, they were the other biblical nations before they were called Indians. They were whatever the hell they descended from, whether they were Israelites, Babylonians, Syrians, whatever. That's what they wore before they were called American Indians, right? So, yes, these lands belong to us, but the government that is here, they don't. And they can go. 
I don't care. I'm not going to cry for this evil, wicked country. They, this whole evil, wicked society can be destroyed. I don't care. But for that woman to cry, it shows you she's not a real prophet of the God of Israel, period. You know, um, so you know how you have people who said that there's going to be three days of darkness, so on and so forth. The only place that I can see them getting that from is Exodus. And when Exodus is, when you read that in Exodus, it's not a prophecy. It's something that actually happened during the time of Moses. I didn't read anything in the Bible saying that that's going to happen again. However, when you read in these other, when you read in the book of the prophets, like if you read uh, like Jeremiah, Ezekiel, all that stuff, you will get prophecy. You will get in time prophecies. Also, when you read in the book of Revelation, you also get in time prophecies, right? When you read outside of the Bible, like the books of the Apocalypse of Baruch, I can't speak, the Apocalypse of Baruch, you also get prophecies that that are very similar to what you will read in Revelations, right? So this three days of darkness, will it happen? I highly doubt it. Highly doubt it. I don't know everything the Most High is doing, but I highly doubt that, that we're going to get three days of darkness because that's a curse that he already did. We're going to get a different set of plagues this time around. The world is going to get a different, they're going to get different plagues this time around. It's not going to be the same thing in the past, as in the past. Just like the Most High, he didn't flood the world twice. He did it once. I think it's going to be the same thing when it comes to these plagues, right? It's going to be a whole different chain of plagues. Some of them reminiscent to what happened in the past, but it's going to be different this time around, right? Um, but like I said, you know, she's no prophet. Ain't no prophet going to cry for America. But you know what she does remind me of? In the book of Revelations, where you read about how the other nations, they look at spiritual Babylon fall, right? And they're looking like, damn, that place used to be a great place. They, they essentially are crying for it, you know? And that's what she is. You know, these other countries, they're, they're seeing America fall. And they're like, damn. I remember why I used to look up to that country. I remember why I used to want it to go to America and become an American citizen, right? But now look at it. It's 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 a mess. It's a mess. <laughs> they lost their power. Their dollar is nothing. They're destroying themselves. Why would I want to go over to America? Look at that place. And of course, the wicked people, the inhabitants of that spiritual Babylon who are still stuck to that system are going to cry about it. See, the only reason why these so-called Gentiles are crying like the one in, in the, the video that Yarka shows and then the lady in the video that Big Judah showed, the reason why people like her are crying is because they see their privilege going out the window. They see their privilege because best believe 10 years ago when they still had their power, their privilege, their dollar was still strong. You know, their society, white society was not being affected. Because best believe we've been we've been affected by poverty for the longest, but now they're going through what we went through. And now they can't take it. So that's why they're crying. If she really, if she really cared about righteousness, she would have been crying aloud 10, 20 years ago. Like I said before, you know, our people been doing this. We've been crying aloud. We've been sparing not. But now her her Johnny come lately ass wanna come along and cry about America falling. We've been crying aloud. These, these, I can't take people like her serious at all because they're, they're lost. I mean, they think they can come along and do what we've been doing. And then they're crying about the wrong thing. All she is, is just a whore of Babylon crying, watching herself being tossed to and fro and her lovers aren't there for her anymore. That's what this is. We've been crying aloud for the longest, okay? And these are the plagues that are gonna happen in those times. So anyways, in the apocalypse of Baruch, it picks up with Jerusalem falling before they go into the Babylonian captivity, right? So an angel comes down and tells Baruch, hey, Jerusalem is about to fall. I need you to get up out of here because I got some work for you to do, right? So he tells him that he says, hey, Jeremiah is going to go off into captivity with the people and he's going to minister unto them. You 
you're going to stay here with the people who stay here and I'm going to give you prophecies, right? And I want you to write these prophecies down. So essentially Baruch is there. He ministers to the people who are still left in land. Um, he tells them to go to a certain place. Most High tells him to go to this cave or something like that and essentially to cleanse himself, to fast, meditate, and cleanse himself for these certain amount of days. And then the Most High is going to pull him out of that area and give him dreams, right? And give him visions. So these are the one of the visions that he seen, right? That the Most High gave him, right? So right here in verse 25, it says, And he answered and said unto me, so this is the Most High talking to uh, Baruch, right? You too shall be preserved till that time, till the sign which the Most High will work for the inhabitants of the earth in the end of the, sorry, <laughs> in the end of days, right? This therefore shall be the sign when a stupor shall seize the inhabitants of the earth and they shall fall into many tribulations and again when they shall fall into great torments and it will come to pass when they sh when they say in their thoughts by by reason of their much tribulation the mighty one doth no longer remember the earth yes it will come to pass when they abandon hope that the time sorry that the time will then awake so the Most High said to Jeremiah, because Jeremiah asked for a sign, because at that moment, Jeremiah, he saw the enemies destroying Israel and taking down Israel. And he's like, well, what's I see what's happening to us. Right. If in this you get it from reading the above chapters. Right. He says, I see what's happening to us. But what's going to happen to our enemies? He literally said this in the previous chapter, which I didn't copy on here. He's like, what sign are we going to have for our redemption? Right. <laughs> Excuse me. And the most high said this. He said, you know, that when you see this sign, you know that the air, the end is going to draw nigh. A stupor is going to fall over the people. And essentially, that's what's been happening to us for the past. I want to say maybe the past 100 years, a stupor has fallen over the people to where we became so consumed, especially during the, the industrialization era. We became consumed with the American dream, trying to build wealth, forgetting the most high. You know, I'm not going to say taking church church out of the schools because the stupor was on us before that. We forgot who we were as a people and they were taught who they 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 were given our history. Right. They were lied to about their history. The Reconstruction era era, I believe, was the 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 time where they were putting the stupor when the stupor was being put on the people because everybody lost their history. Everybody forgot about the most high. People start focusing on wealth and all this other stuff that did not matter, you know, and it got it progressively got worse and worse over the decades to where we forgot who we were as a people. Everybody has forgotten who they are. You know, a lot of people have inherited lies, you know, like you see with the so-called the, the Native Americans who look Asiatic. They've been they've been believing that lie for the past hundred years, you know. During the Reconstruction era, they were given our history. You know, you have white people depicting themselves as Christ and all this stuff. That's the stupor that was put on the earth. All these lies, right? Um, and it says, "Marie, just again, you too shall be preserved." Uh, till that time, till the sign which the Most High will work for the inhabitants of the earth and the end days. So, of course, we know this is happening in days. He's telling Baruch that you're going to be preserved. Now, he doesn't mean that. I mean, he could have meant that per Baruch was going to be physically preserved. But I think that he's talking about putting him off in the treasury of light. If you ever read Pistis of Sophia, Pistis of Sophia, you know, what the treasury of light is. It's literally the pillar that is mentioned in um, Revelations where, you know, the saints are saying how long, how long, right? Uh, and it says, this therefore shall be the sign when the stupor shall seize the inhabitants of the earth and they fall into many tribulations, which is what's going on right now. We are falling into many tribula tribulations and when they shall fall into great torments, okay? 
So these things are starting to happen, right? These things are starting to happen. Now, all of them have happened yet, but we are starting to fall into these tribulations, right? And again, when they shall fall into great torments, and it will come to pass when they shall say in their thoughts, by reason, uh, by reason of their much tribulation, the mighty one doth no longer remember the earth. Yes, it will come to pass when they abandon hope that the time will then awaken, okay? Or awake, right? So a lot of these things haven't happened yet, but we will know the end is there when these things happen. Now, what's going to happen? Okay. And chapter 26. And I answered and said, Will the tribulation which to be continued a long time? And what? Oh, sorry. <laughs> and I answered. And I answered and said, Will that tribulation which is to be continued a long time? And will that necessity embrace many years? So he's saying like, you know, how long is this thing going to happen? Is it going to happen for many years? This tribulation. So then uh, continuing on uh, verse 30 of chapter 26. The 12 woes that are to come upon the earth, the Messiah and the temporary messianic kingdom. And he answered and said unto me into 12 parts. So this is this is simply just this isn't part of the book. This is just like the title. I don't even know I read that. So anyways, he says, and he answered and said unto me. So this is the most high responding to Baruch saying this into 12 parts uh, is that time divided. And each one of them is reserved for that which is appointed for it. Right. So there's going to be 12 plagues reserved for those 12 parts. Right. In the first part, there shall be the beginning of commotions. I believe that that's where we're in right now. I believe we're in the beginning of commotions. When I think of commotions, I think of something starting to move. Sounds. We start to hear rustlings of sounds. Wars, rumors of wars, you know what I'm saying? Earthquakes in diverse places. These are all things that are starting to move, starting to happen. We have these weather anomalies and weather phenomenons happening all across the country. Like I said, literally the same path that the solar eclipse is going is the same path that all these storms and tornadoes, this unprecedented weather that we're having, following that same line that the eclipse will you can't tell me that's by chance but we have we're having all these oddities like i said this winter that we had is not a true winter like we literally had 70 and 80 degree weather going up and down up and down up and down literally even to this this spring we're getting warm and then cold weather warm cold weather it's crazy but i believe that we're in the commotions we're in the starting you know i think of a train when the train starts moving it doesn't just take off you 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 see the train it does this when the first cart moves the other one moves and then it starts to move little by little you hear it pulling like doom 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 and it moves back and you start hearing it moving you start seeing it moving i believe that's where we are we're in the beginning of the commotions everything is starting to move everything is starting to turn up and then after that we're going to start to have these things happening and i'm gonna i'm gonna get to a little bit more you know uh talking about CERN because I believe CERN is going to play a part in this. Okay. Um, in the second part, okay. And in the second part, there shall be slayings of the great ones, right? So what is that? What does that mean to me? What that means to me is that you're going to have, you're going to have high ranking military officials, politicians, leaders who are going to be killed. I believe that's what's next. You know, I believe that people are going to be assassinated. People are going to get killed. You know, very important people are going to be ki killed left and right. I believe that is is what's going to happen, right? Uh, and in the third part, the fall of many by death. Anybody thinking of that snake venom? I mean, think about it like this. We seen people take that snake venom, right? 
Remember that documentary called Died Suddenly, right? Remember that documentary? Remember all those people that dropped dead? There are still people dropping dead right now. Like I think I mentioned in another video the other day, I may not have mentioned it. There was a famous saxophonist who just recently died. They didn't disclose how he died. Mind you, he died like five days ago. Why does it take five days to do an autopsy when literally a average, the average person has their autopsy done in 48 hours to find out what the death is? Why are they so quiet about it? Because this man died just like how millions of other people died from taking that, allegedly taking that, right? I believe that whatever they're trying to do, if they are trying to conduct these biological attacks, it's probably some type of agent that's going to activate whatever these people took in them, right? So it's probably going to be more deaths like that. Continuing on, it may even get to the point to where a lot of them are just going to drop dead, right? Because remember that scientist from that scientist slash doctor from Ohio, from Ohio, he said that they're going to be dropping dead between three to five years. We're only in year two, or, or one and a half, two, right? So they still got time. It's probably going to be a, a point in time where people are just going to die off in, in mass numbers, right? Because of that. And because of all the other stuff that they're spraying in the atmosphere, right? So that's what I think of when I think of um, in the third part, right? I'm going to read it again. And in the third part, the fall of many by death. It says the fall. So people are just going to be dropping dead. I mean... We, we're seeing it already on a small scale, but just imagine around that third to fifth year where people are just going to just drop dead. I mean, because it doesn't say that they're going to be slain. It just says the fall of death. So they're just going to be dropping dead. Right. In the fourth part, the sending of the sword. So I think that the people who are going to make it after that great dying off. It's going to be warfare. You know, it may be rumors that, oh, this country did a biological attack on us or that country did a biological attack on us. But really, it was probably their own government who did it or it was really people who died from being inserted. Right. So, you know, all these all these plagues are to come. It seems like it is. It, it, it seems very realistic that with the situations that we got going on right now, that that it's going to lead to these plagues, honestly. Um, okay, so verse six, it says, and by the way, this is in the apocalypse of Baruch, not Baruch, but the apocalypse of Baruch. Uh, verse six, and it says, and in the fifth part, famine and the withholding of rain. So there's going to be a famine because we see what they're doing right now with the avian flu they're killing off all these chickens they're killing they're still killing all these animals off cows chickens what have you everything they're trying to kill off we see that the wells are killing themselves you know because of they're not naturally doing it they're not being chased by the little vibe like some people think years ago my teacher showed me that they actually have a technology like sonar technology that causes wells to kill themselves right and i believe that's what they're doing right now they're trying to I believe the cowards that the devils that run the society, they're trying to kill off as much as they can so that they can kill us off because basically they're doing everything they can to kill us off and they're trying to stop our food supply. So they're killing all the you know domestic animals, they're even killing a lot of the wild animals off. They even have this uh, brain eating uh, parasite that's killing off deer, killing off deer, killing off moose. You know, spreading to even the clean animals. You know what I'm saying? Animals that we can eat. You know, and then they got the avian flu that's killing geese, killing chickens, killing. They're killing off everything. They're contaminating our soil with the, you know, with the train crash, putting the pollutants up in the air, doing all this weird stuff, destroying the soil. I mean, they are trying. They're trying to wipe us out. Like I said, in the Book of Revelations, this is why it says, "If the Most High did not speed the time, there'd be no flesh left alive." This is why our weeks are going by very fast. Literally, my work week is Sunday through Thursday. Today is Thursday. I still remember Sunday because time is going just like that. And I know 
I know that you know that time is going by fast because everybody's saying it. Everybody, young, old, whatever. I spoke to an old guy probably about three years ago where he said when he was a child, time didn't go this fast. Time didn't go this fast. Mind you, this guy, this 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 gentleman was probably about 50 years older than me. 50 years older than me. And he said, yeah, time has definitely sped up. And the Most High is doing that because literally these devils will wipe everybody out if they could. If they could, they will wipe everybody out. Even themselves, probably. But yeah, famine is coming because they're destroying everything. They're trying to keep us from growing our own crops. They're trying to keep us from growing our raising our own livestock. They want us dependent on them. So when they destroy everything that they're raising, we can die off. We'll have nothing to fall back on. No skills, nothing. We won't know how to fish. We won't know how to hunt. We won't know how to grow our own food. We won't know how to forage. We won't know how to do anything because we're so dependent on them. This is why I highly recommend you guys to buy books on fishing, hunting, farming, foraging, uh, making your own medicinal, uh, your own medicines, right? You know, using wild edibles and all that stuff because we won't know once when they take down the internet, you can't, you can't pull up the internet. You can't open up your phone anymore. Once when they pull that down, you need something tangible, you know, because if you don't have those skills now, at least you can learn them because you know how to read, you know what I'm saying? You can learn them while you're out in the wilderness. You know, you can use the pictures and stuff like that because if they shoot an EMP out, your book ain't going to evaporate with your phone. <laughs> you know, it ain't going to fry with your phone and your internet and your computers, your TVs, all that stuff. You'll still have it. That's why, seriously, get these books, get these these foraging books, these these wild edibles and wild medicinal books, uh, bushcrafting books, how to build, how to do this, how to do that, because we're getting to that time. And like I said, this is not fear. This is being prepared. This is being prepared. You don't want to have to struggle out there. I literally watched uh, in, in Yarka's video today when it was talking about EMP. They said if an EMP goes out, I think within 10 years, half of the United States population will be dead because they won't know how to survive. They won't know how to survive. Right. So these things are coming our way and it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. They are. You can see them setting up for this famine. You can see it. You can see with your eyes closed how they're just they're destroying these food processing plants They're killing off all these animals. They're making up all these laws and regulations so you can't grow your own food. It's coming. <laughs> it may not come tomorrow. It may not come next month. It may not come next year. But it's definitely coming. It's, it's up the pipeline. And it's best that we teach ourselves how to survive and teach our children how to survive rather than being dependent on them and end up falling and, and, and losing our lives because of these guys, right? You know? Um, but yeah, man. Send your prayers up to the most high that he will guide us through this thing because he will. I know he will. I know he's going to guide his people home and the Gentiles who cleave on to us, you know, but uh, continuing on. Um, so the withholding of rain. Now, remember this, though. These people can't control the weather. We know that the most high controls everything. Everything is through the most high's will, right? But he allows evil people to do things. You can read that through scripture. He he influences and allows them to do it through their own hands, right? So I wouldn't be surprised if that withholding of rain is some type of technology that they have, right? Because we know they can control weather. I mean, hell, they, they caused this cloud coverage to come over on the 8th, the, the day of the eclipse. They have this massive record-breaking cloud coverage on that day. Like, how ironic. Record-breaking? Okay. So we know they can control weather. It's, it's proven. They what, they disclosed that information, like, what, a year or two ago that we actually can control the weather? Well, that they can control the weather through technology? So anyways, um, and in the sixth part, in the sixth part, earthquakes and terrors. Woo! I don't know if y'all watched that episode of... Um, it was one of the recent episodes of Shogun where they were sitting on the mountain looking at his little town and stuff and an earthquake just came and broke him up and he almost lost his life. 
scary stuff, man. Eight. Uh, sorry. I'm going to go over here to verse. Uh, eight says wanting. I don't know why it says that in, right there. But anyways, it says uh, verse nine. And in the eighth part, a multitude of specters and attacks of the Shadim. Woo! Creepy. Creepy, creepy, creepy. Um, Spectres. I don't know if you guys know what specters are, but those are spirits. Shadim are demons. So literally, they're going to be demons after this earthquake and terrors, right? This is where I think Harp is going to come in. And it's not just, I mean, sorry, not Harp, CERN. Because they have a hydron collider uh, in like Switzerland, Geneva, Switzerland. But they also have one here in America. They have actually have multiple ones around the country. I just learned that today. Which is why they changed the name from CERN to Nerds because it's like network something, 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 right? Um, I believe that these people are that portal because I literally just watched a video the other day where there was a woman who worked at CERN. And she was talking about how her and several other people would see entities coming through these portals. I remember hearing rumors about that years ago. I want to say maybe like seven years ago, I heard rumors about people seeing these entities. It was more than seven years ago. I want to say eight years ago, eight, nine years ago. You know, they were talking about seeing these demons coming through that portal that they made in Switzerland, right? I believe that this is how they're going to get there. These Shadim inspectors, they're going to come through that damn portal and the other portals that they probably have around the world, right? This is why I believe that they're going to start up. They're going to do a regular run of the Hydron Collider on the 8th because they're taking advantage of that energy. They're going to try to open that portal on that day. Now, are demons going to come out and attack people on that day? No, because we see that there's different parts in which this is going to happen. Unless leading up to the day, all these things happen, right? Um, but I think they're just warming up the wheels. You know, they're getting it. They're warming up that engine. They're getting it ready. For the day when they're going to use these, you know, use the Hydron Collider to let out the Spectres and Shadim, right? So, uh, continuing on, on verse 10, and it says, in the ninth part, the fall of fire, right? We about to have some, uh, some, some Sodom and Gomorrah going on, so there's going to be fire falling from the sky. And no, I do not think these are meteors, like... Coming from outer space because we know that's a whole psyop hijack. There's no such thing as outer space. We live on a flat plane, and above that is the ferment and water. <laughs> so yeah, there's gonna be fire coming out of the sky. And in the tenth part, repine and much oppression. Now I'm not sure what repine means, but I'm thinking that it has something to do with oppression. But um there's going to be much oppression, and I'm not sure if that's going to be from the Shadim, the demons oppressing people, you know, maybe rounding up the people, putting them into, like, concentration camps, what have you, or if these are going to be other people, like Mad Max style, right, where they're going to have their own little enclaves and cities and have, like, a bunch of slaves. I don't know, right? Uh, and 12, verse 12, and in the 11th part, wickedness and unchastity, right? So it's going to be like just people straight up, just wicked. And who knows? You know, this may go back to the time of Noah where there were giants here and they taught us all this wicked stuff. Right. They taught us how to mix animals, splice animals together and make these hybrids and all that stuff uh, that you read about in the book of Enoch. That is probably what's going on because these Shadim, remember these Shadim, if you read in the book of Enoch, they are the spirits of the giants. Right. The spirits of the giants, they had to stay here because they were created on earth. They weren't created in heaven. They were created on earth, so they had to dwell here on earth as evil spirits, right? And now they're being released again, you know, and this is similar to like uh, what we read in Revelations about the 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 spirits that are going to come out of the earth and attack people and they're going to wish they can die, but they're not going to be able to die, Right. This is probably very well, like, when it's talking about the specters and the oppression, it's probably talking about those things, right? And those things are probably the Shadim and what's it called, right? And the specters and Shadim. 
Oh, um, now I, I believe the specters are another type of spirit. You know, like these are just unclean spirits, while the Shadim are the spirits of the fallen, right? And uh, there's gonna be a lot of wickedness and unchastity going on, right? It's gonna be a whole lot of wickedness going on at that part, right? And in the twelfth part, confusion from the mingling together of all those things aforesaid. So all those plagues that happened before from plague 1 to 12, well, plague 1 to 11, they're all going to be mixed together and happen at the same time during the 12th part. So that's going to, that's going to be terrible, right? Uh, in verse 14, for these parts of that time are reserved. So they're reserved. They're going to happen, right? Most High already set that reservation. And shall be mingled one with another and minister one to another. Okay. So continue on verse 15. And some shall leave out of their own and receive in it instead. Okay. So let me read it again. For some shall leave out some of their own and receive in it instead from others. And some complete their own and that of others. So that those may not understand who are upon the earth in those days, that this is the consummation of times, right? So some of those plagues are going to happen again when they're being mingled. They're going to happen on their own while others are not going to happen. And some of them will be mingled together. Maybe the first plague with the fourth plague or the third with the fourth mingled together with the fifth and, you know, so on and so forth. Right. But at that time, like the people. I'm going to read again right here so that those may not understand who are upon the earth in those days that this is the consummation of times. Right. So people are going to be in confusion at that time. And that will be the end time when Hamashiach is going to come back on the scene. Right. So jump down here in the 28th chapter. Nevertheless, whoever understands then shall be wise. So the people who will understand at the time. Oh, there are going to be people who will understand at the time. Right. But there's going to be a bunch of people who are not going to understand what's going on at that time. But there will be people who will understand, of course, for the measure and the reckoning at that time are two parts, a week and seven days. And I answered and said, it is good for a man to come and behold. But is it better? Uh, sorry. And I answered and said, it is good for a man to come and behold. But is it better that he should not come lest he fall? Right. So <laughs> essentially what I assume he's saying is that, you know, it is good for a man to come and, you know, see this stuff, all this stuff happening. But is it does is it any good if he falls by any of these things? You know, if he's taken out by any of these things. Um, But I will say, but I will say this also. Will he who is incorruptible despise the things which are corruptible and whatever befalls in the case of those things which are corruptible so that he may look only to those things which are not corruptible? You know, so what I'm gathering is that he's saying like, you know, let me, let me read that again because <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. OK, so whatever befall. OK, where am I? OK, right here in verse five. Will he who is incorruptible despise those things which are corruptible? So he's saying like in those times, will a man who is incorruptible despise those things that are corruptible? That's those things that are happening at that time. And whatever befalls in the case of those things which are corruptible so that he may only look at the things that are not corruptible. So he's I guess essentially what he's asking is. Will a man be changed in those times? Will an incorruptible man see those things? Hopefully in those times, will he look at those things that are corruptible? Like, nah, that's wicked. I want to stay away, away from them. Will he be, still stay strong like that and not be corrupted by the things that he's seeing during those times? Right. Um, And continuing on with verse six. But if. OK. Yeah. Verse six. But if. O Lord, those things shall surely come to pass, uh, which you have foretold me. So, so do you show this also unto me, if I indeed 
if indeed I have found grace in your sight. So that's why he said that, you know, about seeing those things, about the incorruptible, you know, uh, not essentially one to be a part of the things that are corruptible. Because he's like, you know, since you showed me this, I guess I have favor in your sight, right? Uh, continuing on verse 7, it is in one place. Oh, sorry, sorry. And he's, you know, he's saying, uh, what is it, verse 7? Is it in one place or is it in one of the parts of the earth that those things are to come to pass? Or will the whole earth experience them, right? So that's pretty straightforward. He's asking, hey, is this just only going to happen in one place or is this going to happen worldwide, right? Uh, continuing on. And he answered and said unto me, whatever will then befall will befall the whole earth. Therefore, all who live will experience them, right? So everybody who's living at that time will experience what's going on on the earth, whether it's happening firsthand or if it's happening, you know, secondhand. You just, oh shit, them people, they get fucked up over there, right? Um, <laughs> For at that time, I will protect only those who are found in those selfsame days in this land. So what is he talking about? Remember, Baruch asked, where is this going to happen? Is this going to happen to the whole world? He said, yeah, this is going to happen in the entire world. Everybody's going to experience this in those days. And those people who will be protected in those days where these plagues happen are the people who are going to be found in this self-same land, in this land. What land is he talking about? Well, if you actually read um, before what I've read today, you'll find out that he's in Israel. He's in the land of Israel. So all the people who are in the land of Israel, those plagues are going to pass over them. You know, just like in Exodus, just like how we were in uh, Goshen and we, you know, we adhere to the words of the Most High. We put the blood on the doorpost and all those plagues passed over us. It's going to be the same thing with those who are called to the land of Israel. See, this is why I think it's so important for us to know where Israel is, because those of us who think that it's in the Middle East or in Africa, you're going off into the wrong direction. The brother in Yarka, he was just saying how a brother Karatazaya, who's a brother who makes good music, by the way, um, how he's in Africa. And you have a lot of our people running off to Africa, even those who call themselves Israelites. And it's sad because. If shit pops off, you're going to have a hard time making your way back over here to America. You think that it's hard now getting over to America, especially for these foreigners? Just imagine how, this, how it's going to be when you don't have no boats, no motorized boats. You don't have no planes. You don't have any of that. See, this is why I believe in sticking your ass here. Stay here. You know, because no matter where you flee to, you're going to deal with these same issues. I'd rather deal with my issues in familiar territory than in foreign land, you know, but we have a lot of people who who bought into these lies that we came over from from Africa and that Africa is the motherland that we got people running over to Africa and a lot of them are finding out the hard way. Actually, majority of black people who go over to Africa, they come back over here because they see that it's way worse over there. They see that they have a whole new set of issues that they're not willing to deal with over there. And they're like, okay, this whole Pan-Africa unity stuff is all bullshit. So they find their way back over here. We're not from over there. Hell, a lot of the people who are over there aren't even originally from over there. Their ancestors aren't originally from over there. They don't need to be over there. But I do feel that the Most High is going to find his people back home. But I believe that the ones who are going to make it to the real Jerusalem, which is in Utah... The Most High is already talking to us. He's already point, he's already pointing us in that direction. And those who are willing to to give ear to us who know where it is, they're going to be the ones who are going to follow. Also, those who are like Africa, 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 Middle East, Middle East, Middle East. Those are the ones that aren't paying attention to the Most High. Honestly, in my opinion, not all, but a lot of them who think that Israel is is in the Middle East. A lot of them are hard hearted, evil people. Same thing with the ones who are in Africa. You should have seen the brother who debated a Yob Nazir. That brother, that that Negro was evil, evil. The way he was talking about the brother Ayob Nazir when he was trying to prove 
of Yo Nazir was trying to prove that Israel is here in the Americas and he has done a phenomenal job. Salute to that young man. Keep 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 doing what you're doing. Stay strong, you know, because I know YouTube is messing with you right now. Stay strong, young man. You are doing the most high's work <laughs> with the research that you're pulling out. Salute to you. And may the most high bless you and your family. Keep y'all strong and give and give y'all abundance. I mean that. From the bottom of my from the bottom to the top of my heart, for real. Um, because he's doing he's doing the most high's work right now. You may not agree with everything what he's saying, and same thing with me. You know, you may not agree with everything I'm saying, but pray to the most high, meditate, let him show you the truth, you know, because I I may not agree with everything a yo says, but the most high is he's he's working through that brother, man. It's a beautiful thing. Um, but yeah, you know, I believe no matter what you believe right now. The Most High has his select people who he's going to use as tools in the future, probably to bring his people home, you know. Um, so this is why I believe it's very important to know where the land is, because he can use people like us to bring his children back home to Israel. Those who are going to listen, because best believe all Israel is not going to be saved. I don't care what that verse says. That verse was talking about what was happening at that time. There are going to be Israelites who are going to be destroyed. There are going to be Gentiles who are going to make it into the land. While Israelites, blood-born Israelites are going to be destroyed and thrown into chastisement. That's what's going to happen to them, right? Because you got a lot of wicked, evil Israelites out here who are going to be destroyed, unfortunately, right? This is why I don't just pray for, for myself and my people. I pray for the Gentiles who are going to cleave also because... We know that they're going to cleave. I mean, hell, they're, you know, that's why I can't with the, the bang on Esau stuff. Like, that's so dead and gone to me. Like, I don't even understand that concept anymore of just hating Gentiles because they're Gentiles. Because I understand scripture. I understand that our ancestors, before there was even a physical Israel on earth, right? Our ancestors dealt with Gentiles. And when you read throughout scripture, we have always dealt with Gentiles. You know, like I've said before, Abraham loved Eleazar so much so that he was going to give all his inheritance to Eleazar. But the Most High said, no, slow your roll. I'm going to give you a son, right? Our forefathers always dealt with Gentiles. Our foremothers were Gentiles. Some of the patriarchs' mothers were Gentiles, right? Moses' sons' mothers, mothers were Gentiles, right? But yet they were still Israelites, you know, um, like I said, there's going to be Gentiles who are going to make it. <laughs> they're going to receive that salvation that some Israelites just aren't. And that's just that's just what it is. The Most High has always dealt with Gentiles. But Israel is first because we're supposed to be the light to the world. That was our job. We failed. We can't be mad at the Gentiles about that. And don't get it twisted. Yeah, we can be upset at what they have done to our people. But we have to remember that they were the whooping stick. And they're going to be paid double, triple, ten times what they did to us. They're going to suffer that. But the righteous ones, the ones who cleave unto our people, the ones who repent and turn back to the Most High and His people, they are going to be spared, and they're going to be they're going to be placed above the Israelites who are going to be destroyed. It is what it is. Got a problem with it? Take it up with the Most High. <laughs> so, um. Anyways, where did I leave off at? Uh, okay, yeah, right here. So this is why it's important to know where Israel is. Israel, check out our brother, Ayob Nazir, spelled A-Y-O-B-N-A-Z-I-R on YouTube. He used to have locks. He cut them. Um, he made it. One of his recent videos is him showing the location of of Israel. Support that brother too. Support him. UBTV, Karimio, our brother in Yarka. Uh, donate to them. They have GoFund. Well, I don't think they have GoFundMe. They have uh, Patreons. They have uh, uh, Cash Apps that they have posted to, PayPal's, all that stuff, right? And if I remember, I'll try to post it in the video uh, description, comment section, and even their channels to check them out. Um, but yeah, man, uh, Yob Nazir made a video showing the location of Jerusalem, okay? So you guys, y'all need to go and check that video out. Study it up, man, so y'all can know where to go. 
when when everything starts to happen so these curses can pass over you all these people who are telling you that it's in africa their heart is probably in the right place but man they're leading you the wrong way they're leading you the wrong way so i'm gonna read uh the first verse of chapter 29 again and he answered and said and said unto me whatever will befall will befall the whole earth therefore all who live will experience them for at that time i will protect only those who are found in those self same days in this land which is israel right and it shall come to pass when all is accomplished that sorry my vision my vision be going guys man uh and it shall come to pass uh when all is accomplished that that was to come to pass in those parts that the messiah shall then begin to be revealed so then the messiah is going to come he's going to be revealed at the time all those plagues happen and behemoth shall be revealed from his place and leviathan shall ascend from the sea those two great monsters which i created on the fifth day of creation and shall have kept until until that time and then they shall be for food for all that are left now I'm trying to remember what book you read that in. Is that in, is that in Jeremiah? We read that he's going to be slain. Um, <laughs> so anyways, after all that famine and stuff, they're going to be used as food. The behemoth and Leviathan, right? We're going to eat them. Okay, so continuing on the fifth verse of chapter 29. The earth also shall yield its fruit 10,000 fold. And on each vine... There shall be a thousand branches, and each branch shall produce a thousand clusters, and each cluster shall produce a thousand shall produce a thousand grapes, and each grape produce a core of wine. I don't know how much a core is, right? And those who have hungered shall rejoice. Moreover, also they shall behold marvels every day. For the wind shall go forth from before me to bring every morning the fragrance and the aromatic fruits and at those close oh, sorry and at the close of at the close of the days the clouds distill in a dew of health and it shall come to pass that at that self same time that the treasury of manna shall again descend from on high and they will eat in those years Sorry, and and they will eat of it in those years because they are who have come to the consummation of time. And it shall come to pass after these things, when the time of the advent of Messiah is fulfilled, uh, that he shall return in glory. So resurrection, that's what they say, right? Then all who have fallen asleep in hope of him shall rise again and it shall come to pass at that time that the treasuries will be opened in which is preserved the number of the souls of the righteous and they shall come forth and the multitude of the souls shall be seen together in the assemblage of one thought and the first shall rejoice and the last shall not be grieved for they know that the time has come, which it is said that it is the consummation of the times. But the souls of the wicked, <laughs> when they behold all these things, shall then waste away the more. For they shall know that their torment has come and their perdition has arrived. Whew. I don't want to be caught on that bad side. Not at all. So, you know, brothers, sisters, you know, stay prayed up, man. Stay prayed up that and, and try to do the most high school to the best of your ability. Don't be out here trying to be wicked, man. There's no need to be evil to each other. You know, <sighs> I could just imagine how bad it's going to get when shit hits the fan. It's literally going to turn into like little Mad Max scenarios out here where you're going to have these little enclaves of. People killing each other, robbing each other, doing all this foul, wicked shit, man. I would love to see all these things happen, but I pray that the Most High has uh, has my family and myself 
in a good place protected. <laughs> But yeah, that's essentially it. That's all I wanted to do in this video. I wanted to um, just talk about those things. Um, yeah, man, be prepared. Be prepared for what may possibly happen, you know, in these coming days. I mean, I believe that if you stay prepared, you ain't got to get prepared, man. If you, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. And that's just what it is, you know. Um... You know, I don't operate in fear. Like, I don't fear anybody. <laughs> I don't, man. I don't. It has nothing to do with my size. The most high has always made me a warrior, man. When I was a child, you know, it was it was things I was afraid of. But as I got older, I started to lose my fear of death. And the most high gave that to me while I was a child to where I stopped fearing death. I'm like, hey, if it's my time to go, it's my time to go. You know, ever since I had my son... You know, I've been more, let me see, how can I say, like cautious when it comes to things, you know, because I'm not trying to go unnecessarily if I don't have to, because I have a little man that I got to raise, you know, and I want him to be a man when he reaches that age. I don't want him to be a grown fool. So I'm trying to do my best to be here for my son, you know, but if it's my time to go, it's my time to go, you know, and I pray that the most I would do his work and you know and making my son into a man but um you know we gotta be prepared we gotta get ready because i honestly believe if you're not preparing yourself spiritually most importantly spiritually if anything spiritually then you don't truly believe in the most high if you're sitting here crying about america falling you're crying about the dollar tanking you're crying about your 401k your retirement and all this stuff you're not you're not a part of the fold. You're not a prophet. Oh, girl is not a prophet at all. People like her are not prophets. If you're crying about the fall of America, you're not, the Most High is not working with you. And that's the bottom line. Anyways, that's all I have to say. I will talk to you later. Peace out, Shalom. And may the God of Israel bless all of those who do his will. Shalom.